Okay, so what can I do better to well, improve my kick? First, you can just keep your eyes on the ball when you follow through with your foot. Okay, so instead of just kicking and looking away and hoping it goes in the right direction? Yeah, you just keep your eye on the ball and follow through. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, eye on ball, eye on ball. Three, two, one. Yeah, that wasn't so great. I may not be good at this sport, but there's lots of other sports to choose from, right? And recently reporter Jonathan Horse had a chance to check out another sport out at the Agassiz Speedway. And being the car enthusiast that he is, he just couldn't pass up an opportunity to chat with some of BC's best stock car racers. It was certainly an event fueled by loud engines, some crashes, and lots of adrenaline. It's just the uh, the bumping and the banging that goes on between the cars and uh, some and a lot of skillful driving as well. The Agassiz Speedway played host to the ASA's Late Model Sportsman Series, which has been touring across BC, bringing a grand variety of drivers from all over the province. Drivers like Trevor Adelman from Cornell, who is a paraplegic and has to use hand controls. I, uh, I don't know, my guys would say I drive a lot better now than I did before. I mean, to me, it's it's just a natural thing. I mean, I've been driving with hand controls since I was 19. I'm 28 now, so my, my focus is now to, to win races and do the best I can when I'm on the racetrack. Corbin Thomas took the win that night, but don't worry, because Harrison resident Ian Graham came second. Today, today it was, uh, it was fast. It was a lot of cars were, were moving, and <laughs> that feels great. Uh, you know, to come to your home track and be on the podium is pretty unreal. And this track is the only quarter-mile oval speedway in the Lower Mainland, and it has been serving up action for years now. Started with a bunch of the old boys of Agassiz racing a uh, sand track on the banks of the Fraser River and then they uh, made an arrangement with the District of Kent to come up here and develop this bench up here. And it started as a dirt track in 1971. Over the years, this non-profit track has been steadily growing. And its most recent add-on? The bathrooms. And the official ribbon-cutting ceremony being but it was also the victim of a recent robbery in which some sophisticated burglars made off with a substantial amount of wire. I guess the price of copper has gone up and we're back into wire thefts. And uh, they got into the property next door and then trampled through the blackberries, cut the barbed wire fence. And they cut and pulled wires through, taking the majority of it. And it gets worse as we go along. We've had people volunteer. They phoned uh, uh, some of us on the executive. We've had people email us, will, emailing us, willing to volunteer time and effort. It's perhaps this coming together of support for a tiny little track that best symbolizes that this place is a whole lot more than an avenue for speed. It, it's just a great place to be in. You know, it, something like this happens and people come together and it, it, it's really it's really heartwarming to, to, to get all the offers. It uh, makes a lot of the, the, the time and the effort that I say there's a small number is put into. Uh, makes it worthwhile. With Go Fraser Valley, I'm Jonathan Horst.